Hey everybody, I'm currently editing the Stanley Cup Finals preview video for you all today and unfortunately uh, my computer decided there was too much going on at once and lagged out the whole video recording. So I have to use the Skype video which means I can't have our nice overlay up so I do apologize for that but luckily the content itself is still there so I hope you all still do enjoy. Uh, with that said though, let's get into the video. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Go Bulls. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a special edition of Quick Strike, where today we're going to be previewing the Stanley Cup Finals as the Tampa Bay Lightning are taking on the Dallas Stars. We were waiting for this day. It is here, ladies and gentlemen. I am very excited. As always, my name is Jake Ricker, and I'm here with my good friend, Michael Wax. Michael, how you feeling that we're previewing the Stanley Cup Finals today? I'm very tired. Because I was partying <laughs> a lot last night, but I'm I'm feeling good, man. It's it's nice to be able to finally talk about this stuff. Yes. Well, let's jump right into it so we can get on with the show. Uh, let's first talking about the series schedule. It was officially released last night. So here, let's take a quick look at it. Game one is going to be on Saturday at 7.30 p.m. That's probably actually today because you'll be watching this video tomorrow, hopefully. Um, and then game two is on September 21st at 8 p.m. That is a Monday. And then uh, September 23rd on Wednesday would be game number three at 8 p.m. And then game four, September 25th. All these games are at 8 p.m., by the way. The only one that's not is game one at 7.30. Game five is September 26th. That's a back-to-back, -back, by the way, games four and five. And then uh, game six is the 28th. Game 7th is the 30th. So if the series does go the distance, we'll be headed to September 30th. Michael, thoughts on the schedule? Um, I was telling you before the show started that I thought a back-to-back -back in the Stanley Cup Finals was ridiculous. You brought up the devil's advocate point that, you know, the NFL is going to be on Sunday and they don't want to lose that ratings battle. You're going to lose the ratings battle anyways, guys. Like, it's the Stanley Cup Finals. I know players want to get home and get rested for next season and see their families, but players also want to win the Stanley Cup. So you are limiting the opportunities for players to get back to full strength. You are limiting the opportunities for people like Stamkos to make an impact in the series. I vehemently disagree with the fact that there's a back-to-back -back in the Stanley Cup Finals. I understand why they did it. Doesn't mean I have to like it. Right, absolutely. And you nail it right there at the end, too. You know, we understand why they did it. It's obviously because of the NFL and they want to speed this up. But as you mentioned, you know, I mean, it's the NFL. You're probably going to lose out some anyway, and it, it really hurts the players. And I think it was Pierre uh, LeBron who tweeted last night and was saying that they were potentially going to change the schedule because a lot of people were unhappy with the back to back. So it seems like they didn't go that route, though, and we are going to have the back to back. So, you know, I wonder how many players are OK with this and how many are upset about and whether it's going to have an impact. But luckily, for the most part, when we've seen a back to back in these series, it hasn't had a huge effect on the team. However, uh, we'll see if it does this time around with some of the Lightning players banged up a little bit. So let's move on here now to the previous games between these two teams. They've actually only played twice, and that was in Game 1 where the Lightning lost to the Stars in overtime by a score of 4-3. to three. And then the second time they played... Dallas won this one 3-2 to two in regulation. So only two games to look at here, and Dallas did win both of them. However, as we talk about all the time, the playoffs are a completely different beast. So take this with a grain of salt. Yeah, absolutely. And I saw a lot of people talking about the matchup between the Stars and the Lightning. And one thing that they were talking about more than anything was fatigue. You know, regular season at this point really doesn't matter. It was, what, six, seven months uh, since the Stars and the Lightning last played, it really matters what type of team they are now and how rested they are now. So you look at the Stars, they are a really good team, but all of their series have gone at least six games. The Lightning have their series, two of the three of them have gone five games. Now, you say what you want about overtimes, the Lightning have actually played 120 more minutes than the Stars, I believe which is two full games. But at the end of the day, these two teams are going to be very evenly matched in terms of 
how fatigued they are, uh, what kind of star power they might have, pardon the pun, uh, but they should be fine. Like, I, I really think that this is going to be a great series. Regular season aside, both those games were fantastic. The fact that the Stars won both really didn't indicate, you know, the fact that both of them came down to the wire. So I'm excited. Yeah, that's a great point. They both did come to the wire, and you're right. These, these were multiple. These were very long, very long time ago. Excuse me. And this is the Stanley Cup Finals too. You know, you're here. These both these teams are ready to go, and they're going to play their best hockey that they've ever played, uh, no doubt. But something we can look at that will give us a little bit of a better idea, and was not multiple times ago, is the playoff stats between these two teams. Uh, so. The Tampa Bay Lightning uh, have 17.9% on the power play. Meanwhile, the Dallas Stars have a 27.3% success rate on the power play. So the Stars do lead in that category. However, the rest of the categories, it's all Tampa Bay. And at the penalty kill, the Lightning are 83.6%. Stars are not that far behind at 83.3%. And then goals four per game, the Lightning have 3.11 goals. And then for the Stars, it's 2.95. And then goals against... Uh, per game, the Lightning are at 2.21 and the Stars at 3.05. So that's the biggest difference I notice when I look at these stats is the Lightning actually seem to have a better defensive stat than the Dallas Stars do, which is kind of surprising when you think about it because the Stars are supposed to be the defensive team in this one. Yeah, and again, I know we said that the regular season was a long time ago compared to the playoffs, but one of the narratives coming out of these playoffs is that Dallas couldn't score in the regular season. They were bailed out by solid defense and spectacular goaltending. In these playoffs, they've been able to score. Not as much as the Lightning, because the Lightning have had some unbelievable games when it comes to putting the puck in the back of the net. But the Stars have been able to score their fair share. They've been able to win. And I am a little bit surprised that the Lightning have the goals against advantage. Just shows how good Vasilevsky has been how underrated he's been because the talk of the town has been Anton Hudobin, who has been unbelievable and has pitched, I believe it's four shutouts in these playoffs so far. He's been great. So it'll really come down to special teams. I really hope the Lightning are able to increase their power play with a certain somebody named Steven coming back, hopefully in this series. But if even if he's not, they need to continue shooting the puck at the net and generating scoring chances because we've seen when they generate the chances they have way more of a success rate than when they're just passing it around looking for that golden opportunity right and the stars have done very well on the power play so you know they're going to try and take advantage of that and uh, you're right though steven stamkos he was out on the ice for the eastern conference celebration he had a huge smile on his face he's got a great playoff beard ready to go he's been skating these last couple of days of practice so there's no official war uh, excuse me official word on this but I mean, I have to think he's ready to come back. You know he's itching to come back. So only time will tell here if he's actually going to be able to make a go in game one. Uh, maybe it's a fact, too, where he ends up playing, you know, in game three, game four. But Stamkos definitely looks like he has an opportunity to come back. I hope he is back because that power play percentage is a big difference maker without him. So let's take a look at our difference makers now for this series. And for the Tampa Bay Lightning, we have... Barkley Goodrow, who has a goal, four assists, and five points in the playoffs. And then for the Dallas Stars, it's John Klingberg, who has three goals, 13 assists, and 16 points in this series. So, Michael, your thoughts on these two players? Well, to focus on Dallas first, I think that, you know, Klingberg has not as much name recognition as some of his other Dallas Stars defensemen uh, mates. You know, Miro Heiskanen has been unbelievable in these playoffs. Essa Lindell is a great defenseman. Jamie Alexiak has been a revelation for them. You know, Klingberg is getting lost in the shuffle a little bit, but the fact that he has 16 points already is pretty crazy for a defenseman. It's second among defensemen for the Stars. Again, Heiskanen has been otherworldly in these playoffs. But because they're going to spend so much time taking ice, taking space, taking time away from Heiskanen, you have to make sure that Klenberg is also getting the respect that he deserves. For the Lightning, 
Barkley Goudreau had that unbelievable pass to Anthony Sorelli for the game winner. But what I'm most looking forward to is the fact that he is able to do what Blake Coleman does all the time, which is what Eric talked about a couple episodes ago. Stand in front of the net, make you move them. That is what his job is. That doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to, in the spirit of the play, you know, tip the puck in the net. It's possible. But it does mean that he is going to get in your face. And we'll get to in the three points later why I think the Lightning are going to have to do that more often. Well, right. And you look at his stats, just one goal, four assists, five points. You know, that's not jumping off the page by any means, especially when you compare him uh, to some of the other guys. But he plays a pivotal role in his team with that physicality element, which is a huge part of the Lightning's new game, I should say, because, you know, they used to not really have that physical elements. And he's been really good as of late as well. You know, in the first uh, first round and part of the second round, he was kind of invisible a little bit. And a lot of people, well, not, I don't want to say invisible, but people talked about, you know, was that first round pick worth it? Well, let me tell you something. It's probably worth it at this point because he has started to make an impact in a big way. So hopefully he can continue to do that for the Bolts as they look to try and win their second Stanley Cup in franchise history. All right, let's talk about the three keys to the series, though. Uh, our first one is take away Iskinen's ice. And then the second one is dominate the faceoffs circle again and then the third one is don't be afraid to be physical so let's go ahead and try to break these down one by one starting off with the first one michael your thoughts yeah as i mentioned earlier heiskanen has been unbelievable in these playoffs he's been able to capitalize off of turnovers he's been able to use his vision to be able to pick up and open spots on the ice he hasn't necessarily put up the goals but he has given the stars forwards way more opportunities because people are focusing on him more and more now that's not to say that he is going to do the same to the lightning but i'd like the lightning to pay a little bit more attention to him than some of the other defensemen that they've seen in the series the islanders there was no real one defenseman they had to look out for the Bruins, there was no real one defenseman they had to look out for. You know, you could say Charlie McAvoy, but I don't really think that they were paying that much attention to him. The Blue Jackets, they had to look out for two different defensemen, Zach Rowinski and Seth Jones. And they shut them both down, comparatively speaking. So, you know what? There is a chance that Heiskanen still puts up a point per game against us. But if you can take away those key opportunities that he has, you will be just fine. And believe it or not, Heiskanen actually only had one point in that Vegas series. So Vegas did a good job of shutting him down. So the Lightning may need to take a page out of Vegas's book and try to repeat that there. And obviously, as you mentioned before, the other defense in the Lightning have had to deal with, they've been able to do it. So hopefully they can go ahead and continue that. Now, our second key to the series here, dominate the faceoff circle again. Um, and we mentioned that because I think the Lightning did a very good job against the Islanders uh, what do you think, Michael? I would say they did a very good job against the Islanders in some games, but in some oh, games it was absolutely atrocious. Um, you look at Braden Point. I believe Braden Point is the only one that has a consistent roster spot with a faceoff percentage above like 50%, which is unacceptable. Um, you know, Sorelli has had to step it up, and he did last night. Uh, Yanni Gore, Blake Cohen, Barkley Goudreau, whoever is centering that line needs to step it up in terms of their faceoff percentage. Cedric Paquette needs to be much better in the faceoff circle and much better overall. The key to getting pucks against Dallas or pucks on net against Dallas is winning faceoffs in the offensive zone, pushing the play towards the goalie. And we've mentioned that Anton Hudobin has been great in these playoffs. You have to get shots on net against them as you did with Simeon Varlamov. And the way that you're going to do that is in the offensive zone, you're going to win faceoffs, and then you're either going to have a defenseman blast it from the point or you're going to set up shop. It's not that hard of a concept, guys. Again, not trying to push the Mitchell Stevens train way too far off a cliff, but he is the faceoff guy. That's his job. Like, I would love to see him get in the lineup. 
I don't think he will, if especially if Stamkos comes back. But hey, if Stamkos can come in and win at least fifty percent of his faceoffs, I'd be cool with that too. Yeah, you know that's actually something we haven't really talked about with Stamkos. You know, we said he's been a big. He'd be a big help to the power play, obviously, because it's where we've seen the most issues. But he could also help out that face-off circle a little bit. But uh, you're right. The face-off circle is always huge. We've seen the Lightning score multiple goals uh, these playoffs off the face-off when a defenseman's able to get it cleanly and take a quick snapshot and either get a rebound or even put in the back of the net. So the Lightning had a uh, 43% face-off win rate, by the way, in the game six against the So uh, not over 50%, but still pretty good compared to some of the other games. Um, what's up? That's not saying much. I mean, 43% is pretty weak. Well, so. it's better It's better than what they usually do. That's fair. Uh, uh, and then let's take a look at the third key for the Lightning. It's don't be afraid. Excuse me. It's don't be afraid to be physical. Um, this is something the Lightning, have. their game has changed a little bit over the, year, over the last couple of years where they have gotten a lot more physical. But Michael, uh, what are your thoughts on this one? Don't be afraid to be physical is probably the thing that's going to hang in the Lightning's dressing room. They have been a fairly physical team these past couple of rounds. But if you remember back to the 2015 Stanley Cup Finals against the Blackhawks, they got bullied. They really did. Like, they won two games— and had a series lead, but they got beaten and they got bullied and a couple players got hurt significantly because of it. Do not be afraid to smash people on the Dallas side of things. Like It is going to be tough because they have a lot of really big guns and the fact that they are a physical team too is going to hurt. But again, don't back down from the opportunity to take it to them. Absolutely. And I look at guy at guys like Cedric Paquette, Eric Chernak, even Andre Palat and Sergachev, even Pat Maroon as well, who all have over a hundred hits on this team from this regular season. So those are going to be the guys that you need to get physical. And I cannot stress this enough. Be physical. But don't get called for a penalty and get sus- suspended for multiple games. Kalorn. <laughs> Looking at you, Alex. <laughs> yes. But the uh, physicality is going to be a huge element for them. It's something that, like I said, they've added this year, which could be the difference maker for them. So uh, that's just about going to wrap it up for us real quick before we head out here. Michael, your predictions on the series. <sighs> this is tough. <laughs> you know, I want the Lightning to win. I really do. And there are people in the stars that I really do like. I like Heiskanen. I like Kleinberg. I love Ben Bishop. I'm going to go with the heart attack situation, which is lightning and seven. Um, If they go to seven, you may not see me on this channel ever again. (laughs) But I am excited uh, for this series. It is the antithesis of lightning or excuse me brute offensive power versus technical defensive skill we saw that against the islanders the stars a lot of people say they're a worse version of the islanders i disagree i think they're much better at than the islanders are because they got further than the islanders did very true so, it's it's going to be tough. Uh, Lightning fans, please don't overreact to one or two particular games. If the Lightning go down or the Lightning go up big, it's it's. <laughs> I'm ready. I, I don't know about you, but I'm ready. Oh, I'm definitely ready. And hey, I'm right there with you. As much as I would like a Stanley Cup birthday win if this went seven games, I really don't know if I can handle that. My heart rate was over 120 multiple times in game six. So uh, we'll see what happens. Obviously, though, for my predictions, I am going to take the Lightning, obviously. And I'm going to go in six games in this one. I think the, the Lightning are itching to get back here. They've been on the revenge tour all year. Something is different about this team. I think there's something special. Obviously, I am a Lightning fan, so I'm going to be biased. 
Uh, only time will tell here, though. So that's going to do it for us, guys, here on this preview video. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like down below. Let me know in the comments as well if what you think the series predictions are going to be. Are the Lightning going to be able to pull this off in 7, 6, 5? Or maybe they won't be able to finish it and have to suffer another loss in the Stanley Cup Finals. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out on more content like this. We still have a lot of exciting stuff. Okay.